Well, demand for housing continues to outstrip supply, no doubt. And the question now is when the trend ends, or does it just continue on? Aaron Sykes, chief economist, Nest Seekers International, and Rogers Healy, owner, CEO at Healy Global Relocation. It's great to have you both on, because since this pandemic began, it was evident to us that people were leaving the big cities, buying the second homes. There just wasn't supply. It was really evident, but it has not quit. Rogers, I'll start with you. Your thoughts on how long this keeps going on here? Yeah, I think we're past the point of logic. And I, I think whether it's in New York or Dallas or Des Moines, Iowa, if there's a line out the door, that's a good sign. And I think that, you know, when we're seeing all these numbers that continue to be released with, you know, second home sales selling quicker than new construction sales, I mean, it's, there's really no end in sight. So it's a good time to be in real estate, especially if you're a seller. But, you know, a year ago when this started to get crazy, we're like, we don't know how long this is going to last. And here we are 14 months later saying the same thing. So this trend might not be a trend. This might be a thing. And when it's a thing, it's, it's a thing for a long time. So, yeah, I, I would get used to it no matter where you are. I see. Erin, uh, what are your thoughts on this? I agree. I think it's going to be here for the foreseeable future. I mean, the Case-Shiller Home Price Index rose 12% in February. It rose 11% in January. Prices are increasing at the fastest rate in 15 years. It just really shows no signs of stopping. Um, we have an, I work primarily in Florida, also up in New York and the Hamptons. New York is seeing a tremendous comeback in terms of what's going on in the city, and we had an awesome Q1. But then we come down to Florida, and even though my territory is Palm Beach, I've been working more and more and more in Miami because Palm Beach has zero inventory. There are 30 total houses for sale. That's it. Average prices are 12 million plus. So you have to come into the more urban areas, which is good because we kept hearing about how the cities are dying. It's not true. We need that vertical living space to support the, the need for, you know, the supply and the demand. Right. You know, and obviously Hamptons and Palm Beach and Rogers, I'm sure you're circulating in some of the higher priced areas that, you know, I'm sure you each have a variety of types of things that you're selling. That being said, I mean, at what point, are, are we in a housing bubble? I'll start with that, Rogers. And what happens when it bursts? Um, so to answer your question, the short of it is we're not. And, and I think we've all been doing this long enough to know that, you know, a, a while back, 10, 12 years ago, it was just kind of living in an anxious, you know, state of mind, wondering when it was going to, when it was going to implode. But what we have right now is we also have a shortage of supply. And when you have a shortage of supply, not just new construction homes, but just actual the materials where l lumber is up 4x from a year ago, literally, and people are living at home, they're making babies, they're doing things that require more space. And because of that, we're going to have this happening for a long time. And on top of all that, this is about to be the biggest, the biggest group of buyers is going to be millennials. And millennials are buying at a different pace than they ever have before. And millennials are also right. moving to the suburbs for the first time ever because they want to. So when you have this, we have a 15 yeah, year Yeah, I mean, run. people are definitely looking for quality of life and a change yeah. of pace. I get what you're saying. I mean, I think the pandemic really changed the way people work, the way they think, right. uh, the way they perceive life. That being said, I mean, we're seeing Home Depot and Lowe's and new highs. These home builders probably have some room, you know, at least for opportunity. Erin, as I, as I look at some of these things, I'll give you an example, Erin, since you know Long Island, right? Um, a house that was probably 300,000 is going for almost 900,000. And not that long ago, it was a three or 400,000. It's just amazing. If someone buys it for eight or 900,000, in a year or two or three, will it be 100,000 again? Or is it gonna go back down? I mean, that's not a, that's not a small jump. No, no, it's an unbelievable jump. And the crazy thing is not only are they buying it for 900000 they're buying it in cash for 900000 75% right. of transactions going on now are all in cash. And that's why I think it's not a bubble, because it's real money. We don't have this subprime crisis that we saw in 2008 and nine. This is just people right. allocating assets differently than we've seen in the past, pulling them out of equities, going, you know, in, it's the same trend with crypto. People are using uh, are investing in different types of places right now than we, we you got to hold it for a long time, because if you think you're going to just flip it and sell it for more, 
I, I just don't know that I see that. I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a pro in the housing world. Final thought, Rogers. Uh, get in when you can, right? And, and listen, what was 300,000 is now 900,000. And a year from now, there's nothing to say it's not going to be a million five. And, and people gravitate towards areas where everyone else is going. So the New York Cities, the Dallas's, the Atlanta's, the Houston's, the Nashville's, they're not going anywhere. And, and I think if you can get in right now, it's a good opportunity to do so. Because on top of all that, low interest rates are still here. So if all you're right. borrowing money, it's the cheapest yeah. it's ever been. You lock in for 10, 15, 30 years, you're in a good position. Yeah. Aaron Sykes, Nest Seekers International. Rogers Healy, Healy Global Relocation. Thank you both very, very much. I appreciate it.